the Bible never records Jesus drinking wine. Amen. Never does. It, the you, version does it? Sorry, I oh, no, you're fine. I don't know if the modern version, I don't think it does. And if it does say it in the modern versions, they're, they're butchering the Greek there. Um, the Bible never, so when you've got Jesus at the, and they say, well, Jesus, I heard this, man, I've heard this so many times. If I had a dollar for every time I've heard this, I could buy, you know, I could buy everybody's meal at McDonald's. But um, when you have, they'll say this, Jesus drank wine at the Last Supper. I'll, I'll tell them, I'll say, I will give you five minutes and a thousand dollars if you can find where Jesus drank wine at the Last Supper. You can't find, it's not there. The Bible uses the word cup and fruit of the vine. That's what it uses. So Jesus never drank wine, never records him drinking wine. The only reference we find to Jesus potentially ever drinking wine was when the, the Pharisees accused him of being a, glutton, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber. But that's, a fault, that's an accusation by the Pharisees, so you can't take it to heart. Um, what you have in the scriptures, and this is, this is, now we're Bible believers, right? We just believe what the Bible says, where, when it says it, how it says it. We don't try to change it to fit our agendas. There, were, there are three scriptural, or excuse me, four scriptural reasons why a man could drink wine. Like alcoholic, true blue wine. Only four reasons. The first one is in Deuteronomy chapter 16 where you would take a tithe. One of the reasons why we don't preach tithing here is because it's Old Testament. It, it's it, and not just Old Testament. It is Jewish Old Testament law, Mosaic law. All right? That's why we have a box in the back. You just put whatever you want to put in the box. I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to regulate it. I don't say, well, you got to give 10%. But part of that, so listen to this. And it, when you have the tithe, if you study Deuteronomy, I think, is it 14 or is it 16? It's 14, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I was saying 16, and I was like, ah, I don't know if that's 16. It's 14. If you look at Deuteronomy 14, now this is, man, this goes, this flies in the face of a lot of people, man, a lot of preachers that want to get, get rich off the backs of their people. If you study Deuteronomy 14, the 10% tithe, what you would do is once every three years, you would go and pay your tithe. Once every three years, you would take your tithe to Jerusalem and you yourself would eat the tithe that you took. You would take it and sacrifice it to the Lord, offer it, whether it was corn, wheat, whatever it was, and you yourself would eat it. And then 10% of that 10% went to the priest. Then, if you study Deuteronomy 14, if what you had, if your tithe was too much, if it was too much to carry to Jerusalem, what you would do is you would sell that in the market or wherever, and then you would take the money that you got off that tithe, take it to Jerusalem, and you would buy food, and your family would eat off that. And the Bible says you could buy whatever your soul desired, even strong drink and liquor. What it says. Yeah. Dr. Darren, you're a doctor. Am I right on this so far? Okay. So, you would buy alcohol and you could drink it one, t one time, one time every three years. Now, we believe that, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Now, are we a bunch of Old Testament Jews taking tithes to Jerusalem? No. Okay. Second reason, second reason you could drink wine. Proverbs chapter 30. Give wine to them that are of heavy heart and to them that are ready to what? Die. Perish. Yeah. All right? So, painkiller. What do we do? I mean, what do we do with people that are dying of cancer and they're in their last, you know, last hours or last few days? We shoot them up with morphine, right? Okay. So there you go. Third reason. Third reason you can drink wine in the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter number 3. You look, look, look at the wording of 1 Timothy chapter 3. Now this is for pastors. First Timothy chapter number 3. And uh, look there at... Uh, where is it now? 1 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not in 1 Timothy 3. It's in 1 Timothy 5. What am I thinking? 1 Timothy 5. 
And uh, look there at verse number 23. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. Drink no longer water, but drink a little... Is that what, did I quote that right? Did I read that right? It doesn't say drink. Well, the Bible says drink a little wine. No, it doesn't say drink a little wine. It's not, it's not a beverage. It's not a refreshment, okay? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine what? Often infirmities. All right? What is that right there clearly? It's medicinal. You know if you drink, if you drink, uh, or if you, you take NyQuil, you know how potent NyQuil is? Any cough service is going to have alcohol in it. Okay? That's medicinal purposes. Now, in the day and age we're living in, in the, in the society of modern technology and modern medicine, um, I doubt there's anybody in here that you have to take a bottle of wine. Well, preacher, I've got to get this bottle of wine because my, for my stomach's sake and my often infirmities, you know, that kind of thing. All right? If you want to use that as an alibi, go ahead. Uh, you know, it's like Dr. Upton used to say, if you can sit there and drink a glass of wine, the glory of God, have at it. <laughs> you know, it's like Brother Peacock will say, if you got them, smoke them, you know, that kind of thing. If you can sit there and, and smoke your cigarette to the glory of Jesus Christ, then have at it, man. But the reality of it is, is what does the Bible say in Proverbs 30 where King Lemuel is talking? He said it is not for kings and priests to drink wine. So the two groups of people in the Old Testament that were forbidden to drink wine were kings and priests. Well, if you're saved, what are you? Literally, you are called kings and priests in the New Testament. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You know, Proverbs 23. Who hath woes? Who hath babblings? Who hath redness of eyes? Who hath wounds without cause? You know, he that tarrieth long at the wine, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, does the Bible strictly forbid the drinking of alcohol? Yes. Well, not strictly. There are places where it's allowed, but... If you want to try to get around in all the loopholes and you want to use it as justification for drinking, what, is, what does it ultimately come down to? If you cause your weak, if you, there is no reason at all for a Christian to go out and have a beer with his dinner. There's no reason for it at all. It's a bad testimony. It's a dangerous substance. It is associated with worldliness and sinfulness, and nothing ever good comes out of it. A dr drinking a beer with your dinner on a Friday night has nothing to do with you getting it, with you paying a tithe in Jerusalem. Has nothing to do with you being about ready to perish, and has nothing to do for your stomach. All right, Does that makes sense. So that's why. Well, preacher, you know, you, you think a glass of wine with the meals of sin? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I understand there are different circumstances in the Bible that talk about different things. Come on in, Miss Esther. Good to see you. So, but anyway, but that's why we just, uh, that's why I am a, uh, I, I preach against it. We don't, we don't do alcohol. We don't allow alcohol, people to drink alcohol and go to church here, you know, and, and be, you know, Sunday school teachers and stuff like that. We, we stand against alcohol. Anyway, all right, somebody else got a Bible question. Blake? I know what you're going to say. Yeah. I, I, I actually don't know. I'm not a mind. I'm not a... Uh, 